Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. I've actually always said that Jet, it would be awesome for Jet to be able to be a Someone's sunglasses a jet guy. Jet. By the way, you see a lot of people doing it now where people are sunglasses guys, and it's because you feel more comfortable behind it. Nobody sees your eyes. You're uh, perfect. Yeah. Literally just said that a second. You said, I can say whatever I want to say. And I and I and I'm not in trouble for it. No, you yeah, just, I feel safer behind these things. I actually will go on the record to think I, you know, how Andrew Tate says he's got the whole eye thing. Yeah, I almost think that's a lie. I could be wrong. Well, I think well, you call you calling him a liar. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. You don't matter if he's a liar. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, the reason that Outtakes. he says that he does is because it's like boxing that. He something happened with his eye that he can't take the light yeah. or whatever uh -huh. might be true, but at the same time, full of it. Also, well, what well, we do not work. People, we're, we're, oh, people yeah, actually no. We running, people we're, like yeah, wearing going, this, sunglasses. This, this is about the sports. This people the sports like labs. Like there's some people who look fucking good in sunglasses. Yeah. and can pull them off You're at all times. Sure. I don't think I am, but I'm gonna do it now because one, it makes me feel safer. Sure. <laughs> and and two. I've looked in deep into Jet's eyes before. It's terrifying. Wow! Wow! If he gives you the death, no, if he gives you the death stare, there's yeah. this there's this <laughs> false narrative out there that I'm like a psycho. Like it's not false. No, you're not a psycho. No, but he's not a Listen, psycho. He's no, a psycho. that like that like I'm like I'll. Me and Perez actually discussed this the other night. I just my natural look is of somebody you, who is not so welcoming. Yeah. You know yes. what I mean? Right. So when people see agree. me, they're like this. I don't like. Nobody want like they don't want to get involved with and it's perfect that one of my favorite jet moments of all time Cutsy tells the story the best but after we played four play pot in Arizona we went to the bar to drink after and we had to go in by the bouncer and Perez hands the bouncer the ID yeah. and it's this big guy and he looks oh, at the yeah. ID and Jet's ID picture is that one is of the most horrifying tough things look. And yeah, I mean, hold on. What okay. does the bouncer say, He's Joe? Like, Damn, he looked man. at me. He looked, the fuck he, out. he looked at him. Like Jet handed it. Like Bob gave him an ID. I gave an ID. Then Jet gives an ID. He's like, "Damn!" <laughs> <laughs> like you know, like he was like yeah. one of those big, well, he was like, big man, old chill, guys. He's like, "Chill, chill out, man." He's like. He's like, what the hell is this? Like, and Jet's like, I'll take my ID back now. <laughs> no, he's like, you gotta chill. He's like, yo, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, yo, bro, you gotta chill, dog. He's like, you gotta chill, bro. He was literally, he was and like, Jet's like, I'll take my ID back now. He was like, damn, son, where'd you find yeah. those? Yeah, there's, there's two. <laughs> damn, son. There's two. <laughs> damn, where'd you find this? <laughs> there's, there, there's, there's two types of. Press really sounds like he's from the south now. <laughs> Damn. Damn, son. Where'd you find <laughs> this? <laughs> That's kind of how he sounded, too. Like, yeah, there he is. On <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was absolutely... It's unbelievable. Oh, that's really? phenomenal. Cheers, boys. Salud. Yeah. Everybody Cheers. Else. By the way, I don't Mother even think... Mother Sports Podcast yeah, edition. I, I don't even think we've done an intro, and who really gives a shit? Yeah, but this hurt. is Bob the Sports, another podcast here. We're live here. Let me take a quick sip. Quick sip. Quick sip. Quick sip. Out of respect. We're live here from Quail Lodge, and what a place! Yeah, it's yeah. we're doing it inside right now because we were fighting the the sunlight, so there's nothing we could do outside, which really doesn't do the place justice. And I'm not saying this, Jet. We always have the thing with Wickenburg. You love Wickenburg because it's so peaceful, and you want to retire there at the age of 34 in about four years, six years, seven yeah, years. Yeah, about. Um, but it doesn't do the place justice. This to me is for us to go out and film and get the content we want to do and kind of have it as like our playground. Yeah, it's one of my favorite yeah. spots. They've rolled out the red carpet. Yeah, big and we time. See, you know, we stay on. You know, we're staying on site too. There's like a whole putting course that goes through like the rooms that you stay in. And the golf course is like we're on a golf hole, so it's like we uh, we other than moving down to the to the clubhouse we haven't gone anywhere since we got there. there's it's no perfect. need to no. to be honest if they have you everything need, you need i'm sorry if you need a nice uh getaway a three-day getaway or yeah. something you come to quail lodge it's, mm -hmm. it's the most it's the nicest place you got basically a course to yourself the yeah. rooms are beautiful yeah you just you can relax you can play golf yeah. you, they got a putting course you could relax jet hasn't but you, you could <laughs> yeah, if, you yeah, if you want to well, i'm working, can, yeah, we're yeah, working he's, he's working hard yeah. but yeah. tonight he enjoyed himself a little bit which is great we to had a see good time yeah it's much good. deserved it's, yeah and i will go on the record and say this i not only is the golf great but like i feel like as a group overall we've played some of our best golf yeah in the last couple videos True. that we filmed like mm -hmm. 
I tell you what, Perez is as dialed in right now as I've ever seen him. And Bob's game has yeah. been, has never been better. I managed to somehow put together some decent holes. Like I feel like as a group, we're overall like the golf is improving and it's just yeah. making our videos so much more enjoyable because we're always gonna have that entertainment value. But then you mix in some good golf and some good golf shots. It it's just the the X factor, I feel. Yeah, and even like the matches, like, you know, and get we won't give away anything, but like even the matches. Yeah. They're so tight, and yeah. the golf is so good that yeah. it's been making. And look, outside of Perez, there's been a lot of times where we can't really say that the golf has been so good. The golf has been. Yeah. I mean, we're all dialed. You're in. pumping yeah. the ball right now, Bob. Bob's like, hitting that. That's he's self driver. Yeah, he's hitting good golf shots, but you've gained at least a half club uh, in yardage, and, and oh, probably Boy, twenty. Th you know, you're hanging around with with you know, with. Me certainly, and, and even getting to like cold cuts territory with with some of these drivers, which it's a little dangerous. Bobby Fairways can really yeah. find the fairway. Then yeah, like you know some what? things can really because that flat stick's all it's been hot for quite a minute. Everything else is kind of catching up. Yeah, it's it's making it fun. I mean, it really is. It's making it interesting, and I, I think every video that we've done has been awesome. And then we even threw in you know the video with the putting green that they have out there, which yeah. was a lot of fun, but. I just think top to bottom, it, it's really been a tremendous trip. I mean, look at us right now. Yeah, we're really we're enjoying ourselves. Yeah. I, I, I think we've really had a ball. Um, and again, I, I, I do want to shout out Quail Lodge. They have been just nothing short of terrific. And Bobby Barrett's been great. Bobby yeah, Barrett, head yeah. Pro, Bobby He's Barrett. honestly rolled out the red carpet yeah. for us. I, I, on yesterday evening, we played like a twilight round. Yeah, and like cool. an idiot, I shot a ball out of bounds, and I decided to like rappel down the side of this <laughs> cliff almost, and I got caught up in a bunch of poison ivy or poison oak, and my forearm was all like itchy and stuff. This guy shows up with Benadryl yeah, cream it's, yeah, for me, it's like just, uh, whatever we've needed. Like yeah. Bobby Barrett has been yeah. on cue, like ready to get guys. Done for us. Guys, it's not unbelievable. Made, yeah, he's not afraid to make an on course phone call. No, to grab like a flatbread or to get some beers <laughs> out did. there. And he can play. You know, golf Reynolds too. said he's like Jet needs a Reynolds set on six. Stiff That's stealth. Yes, set. thank you. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it didn't help my game. But, uh, yeah. At least, good, hey, look. At least you set. know it's not the clubs. Yeah, yeah, listen. And also, he can. He, the man can. He doesn't even give a lot of lessons anymore. Or I guess so yeah. much so now. He can play. He yeah, has some long yeah. Clubs. He, he can, can hit a ball. You know what? Too that he was saying that I found interesting, and I guess it's kind of the area. But he was saying it's it's more of an older demographic, and I get it because of the area that they're in. But if you want something where you're just focused on the golf and you could just get away, yep. I mean, even the whole time, there's been no reason for us to leave. Usually we, we're going out to different dinners and yeah, stuff. Yeah. We've been having dinner at the clubhouse every night. Yep. And I, I think that whole thing has been awesome. You don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. between the, the restaurant at the club, like by the golf course, it's just literally like golf cart territory down the road. And then the one up here at like the lodge lobby, I mean, and then you get a bar up here and everything. You don't need to do anything. And like, you want to like walk out back like at night with a oh, beer yeah, and play the nice. and play a couple holes of the putting course like it's like a personal playground. It is. I, I actually it is. this has opened my eyes. I want to do a lot more like golf resorts moving yeah. forward. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to do like Bandon. I'd love to do a bunch yeah. of spots, but this is the ideal spot because you can just go and whenever we want to practice, we yeah. want to get out there, we want to do a nine hole. And, and it's so quiet. Like, it's yeah. not like yeah. we're getting pressed by other sure. people. Like, we just have, like, a pocket well, every time we yeah. go out there to just go and film and have fun. And it's just, it's awesome. I think that's the benefit of, like, and, and I've said this before, like, the Bandons, the Stream Songs, the Pinehurst, the big ones that everybody knows about that are awesome and absolutely worth the trip. But, like, the Quail Lodges, like, Quail Lodge here in Carmel, right down the road from Pebble Beach. But most people, you know, you might not have heard of this place. And, like, in some ways, that's awesome. You get a great golf course. It's a little bit more low key. Yeah. So like Bandon Dunes, like you got to get all your tee times lined up, like the, when you book it months out yeah. and there wouldn't be the same flexibility of like, let's go out and play. That's and you've got a lot more people That's around. True. So it's like, there's a lot of these sort of mid size resorts, golf resorts that have a golf component that people don't know about and like is, are perfect for a guy's trip. Like you go there, you kind of have your run of the run of the place. If you want to go out and play some extra holes, you want, you know, you got a lot of options on tee times. You can you can be more like impromptu. 
Like, there's a lot of, like, this is what we need to highlight. Yeah, I mean, even just the fact that we could leave our carts, like, we yeah. left our bags and our carts over Absolutely. there, and we didn't have to worry about anything. Yeah. Um, I, I really hope, with how much I love the place and how much that, you know, they've been good to us, sure. I hope we can translate people to getting over here. Yeah. And for us, which is a big, big thing, and the first time we went through the course, for us, a big, big moment is when we played the four play pod and we yeah. played Barstool yeah. Yeah, of course. and we played a Mac Quail Lodge for a lot of people that don't know, um, that was a big, big thing for us. And there was a lot of nostalgia to where we were going to different holes and yeah. we were like, remember I said to you, I was like, oh, you had a really good drive here. <laughs> yeah, that was a big part there. Yeah. And it was like that to me, that was like the kind of the coming out party in a way of Bob to sports. I think so. I mean, we got a massive audience and shout out to four Barstool four yeah, play pod. For like sure. that, yeah. Obviously it was beneficial both directions for us to collab and we've been talking about it for a while, but surely that, that propelled, you know, some of the things that we were doing, you know, certainly propelled me individually. I mean, that's the first time anyone really saw me. So yeah, I mean, I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say that that video and that match here essentially changed my entire life yeah I, so like for me especially i come here and i'm like crazy. this this sort of like was the start of everything for that's me. true perez and i were sitting on the on the patio lot well, two nights ago the first night when we got in and i said you know it's crazy because that was what february march it was march we played and it's like less than it's yeah, not even seven like seven, months seven months ago not even and i said perez imagine how crazy like this whole ride has been since we were here last like to look at where Bob does sports has gone and to see like the movement and everything like that is just compiled since that last trip. It's night and day. Perez and I have quit our jobs. Like the whole, the channel has blown up. Like it's, it's, it's insane to see like the movement that we have going and it's, it, it makes me wonder like in the next seven, eight months, if we come back here, where are we yeah. gonna be? Like, what's the next step for us? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Who are we gonna be collabing with? What are, it's just insane. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting, man. I, it's really exciting. I think a good thing that we've done too, which is the way we've always wanted to do it, is a lot of channels, I think, will like neglect themselves from other channels because they see them as competition, when in reality, by isolating yourself, you're separating yourself from so much collabs where there's so much yeah. space in the game yeah. for everybody. Like, we did the Barstool one, and that was huge for both channels. We yeah. did the Good Good one, that was huge. And we did yeah. how many with Good Good? We've done, oh, what, 10 well, videos? And I tell you what, I'd love to get a Good Good with Perez involved. Oh, yeah. And yeah. People I think it has sure. to happen. we got to get all those guys involved. They're all, we've played with yeah. uh, We haven't Garrett played with Sharf. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to Sharf a lot. They're all Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. They yeah. Seem I like, think me and Bobby would be phenomenal yeah. together. Yeah. You know, I think just the whole crew would be awesome. Yeah, if you could just, just, just choose to kind of, you know, not be don't don't look at his competition but as as friendly and we're all kind of working to the same goal it's a big table with plenty of food for everybody to eat oh, yeah. so like it's yeah. not like we're, I'd love to we're do all struggling to grab a piece of a small pie like like i i hope that the people that watch us are watching foreplay or watching good good like we can all you know somebody can watch all of us you don't we, it shouldn't get to the point where like i'm good i'm a good good guy or i'm a foreplay guy or I'm a yeah. bob the sports guy that doesn't help anybody yeah and there's just no reason for it because we don't feel that way i look a l yeah. i look at like some of the channels that go and like they'll talk shit about other channels and it's like it's the dumbest thing it's that you it. could do because you're isolating yourself from so many different channels uh, and opportunities yeah, where yeah. that's not the way to look yeah. at it. And we can compete on the golf course. Yeah. And in, in a way that well, we you got we all are on it doesn't need to be like pink slips or like, you know, I hate yeah, you so I need yeah. to go out there and beat you. It's like we can we can collab and get have competitive matches and all like shake hands afterwards and get a beer. But yeah, that's like, exactly so, Barstool. I mean, Barstool yeah. wanted to beat us oh, so bad. We wanted to beat them so bad. We're all friends. There will be more to come from it. You know what I've liked, Bob, recently? Like, the last few matches? It's gotten chippy with us. It has. <laughs> yeah, In our own bad. group. It was like, yeah. surprising, yeah. Yeah. Dude. like, getting after each other. Yeah. But, like, when the match is done, it's like, it's all it's love. But, like, yeah. I that. love the yeah. fact it's that love. it's gotten... Yeah. It's definitely love, but like I love the fact that there's a competitive nature. Yeah. Like when Perez is playing you and me, or I'm playing yeah. Bob, or like when Bob and I play the matches, like it gets chippy, it gets a little scrappy, sure. it makes it fun. It does. And, and people, I think it translates to the camera. Like people will see, we want to win. Yeah. I don't want to lose matches. Like I want to win, and we all love each other, but at the same time, I think it's fun, and I think as the golf gets better, 
it's going to make our channel that much more entertaining. Yeah, which is something we never really had because where we always kind of relied on comedy. And yeah. now it's a little bit different to where, again, lately it's been different to where we're playing a lot better golf. We'll always have the comedy. We'll always have take the comedy route and approach to it. Oh, we're idiots. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Whether we like that it or not. That is confirmed. It's true. But, yeah, that's always the route that we're going to take. Um, Jet, me and you were talking because we always see it in the comments. And I think it's something that we should touch on. I mean, I think we've definitely touched on it on different podcasts throughout the shows that we've done and whatnot. But for the Bob Does Sports podcast and the Bob Does Sports fan base, they always ask for us to kind of talk about how we met right. everybody. Am I wrong? I mean, we see that all the time. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So I, I, I think we definitely got to touch on that because it's interesting kind of how it all came together and to get in here. Um, I mean, we'll start if we can. I mean, Joe, me and you knew each other before anybody. You tell the story about us meeting each other, which is really good, and then we'll kind of go around because, again, that's something that we kept seeing in the comments yeah. is people wanting to know how this came about. So we wanted to, to do that. I'll let you take it away, just kind of how me and you met years ago. I mean, people think that Bob and I have known each other for like a <laughs> decade. And it's crazy because I think like I moved to L.A. in 2016, which is six years ago. And I think Bob came to L.A. in like 2018. So we've only known each other for like less than five years, which is absolutely insane crazy. because he's my best friend and like somebody that I just, I, I mean, we, we're so close, but I was working at the restaurant, um, in the Beverly Wilshire hotel, the four seasons hotel. And I had just gotten promoted to being the assistant GM at the Boulevard restaurant. Um, it was my first weekend. I recall it very clearly, um, working and being in charge. And I had a busy weekend where they used to have live music. It was busy. The restaurant was pumping and I had to oversee everything. And I thought I was doing a really good job, not to pat myself on the back, but I'm going to do that nevertheless. And I, there was a supervisor from the front desk. She was just an unhappy person. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Just not a happy individual. She came storming into the restaurant saying, who's in charge here? When it was clearly me, I'm sitting there wearing a real nice suit, looking good. And she says, you know, like the music's too loud. You got to turn it down. I'm trying to check people in. Meanwhile, it's like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm thinking like, how many people are checking in at this time? So just to appease her, I didn't want to step on any toes. It was my first weekend. I said, sure, no problem. I'll turn the music down. I go to the band. They're not happy with me. I said, yeah, just turn it down for, you know, the band, everybody's having band. fun. You know, it's so the fun. band, the band's like, oh, what the fuck? And I was like, oh, just turn it down for a couple songs and you'll put it back. So I go to go through the front desk, which was adjacent, like it was right next to the front, to the restaurant. Um, and I guess the music would spill into the lobby. And I go and I said, you know, I'm going to just go and check in and just let her know that I've turned down the music, this and that. And uh, I go to the front desk. I don't see her anywhere around. There's a guy at the front desk and I say, hey, you know, do you know where Melissa is? He goes, oh, she's on her, uh, on her lunch break. And I said, you know, and I don't know why to this day I asked, but this was a defining moment sure. of our relationship. I looked at him and it was Bob. And I said, <laughs> you know, I said, I got to ask you, dude, like, what do you think about, is the music like obnoxiously loud? Like, is it obtrusive? I know you, you're the guy who's having to check people in. Back then, Bob was an overnight, overnight front shift, desk agent yeah. working from like, not 11 o'clock yeah. at night till Terrible. nine in the morning. Imagine running just, into you at 3 a.m. Just oh. grinding it out. Like, you know, just <laughs> really just putting in the man hours. And I just looked at him. I said, you know, you're the guy who's checking people in, not this chick. And I said, what's the, like, and he looks at me like dead serious. I had never met this guy before. And he looks at me, he's like, I think it's great. And I like was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you know, people are having fun. You know, everybody's enjoying themselves. He's like, in fact, I, I think you should turn it up a little bit so I could hear the music better. And I like looked at him like I was shocked. And I was like, well, I don't know who the fuck you are. But I tell you what, I think we're going to get along real well. And it was Bob and we just connected and we started like working. I was closing. He was overnight and we just kind of connecting. And, you know, from that moment, we just connected. And then I remember one night he said, you know, do you like golf? I said, yeah, of course. Who the fuck doesn't like golf? So he said, let's go golf. So we went to Rancho Park. I'll never forget to this day. I showed up Ranger. and I was wearing... You know, people think the outfits are fabricated, no. and I promise you to this day, it's really not. I've always expressed myself with fun, elaborate golf outfits. I was wearing red pants, a red shirt, red hat, and black and red shoes. And I show up, I'm walking to Rancho Park, and Bob sees me, like from like, probably like 100 feet away, and he goes, cuts, cuts. And he didn't, actually, it wasn't cuts, he, I, I wasn't cold cuts back then. He's like, Joe, you gotta walk back, walk back, walk back. 
And I'm looking at this guy's nuts. And so I start walking and he's got his phone in my face. And back then I'm not used to this at all. Yeah. And he's filming me. He's like, this is Joey, the Red Ranger coming in hot. And I was like, this guy's absolutely <laughs> nuts. But we had a blast on the course. We had so much fun and we were just like, you know, we should start filming golf content. And that was just really how the whole thing was born Nova. yeah i mean the funny thing is too when we were at the four seasons like in beverly hills there's a very strict i think you probably know better than me but there's like a strict 11 30 cutoff for like the last call for Midnight, last drink katsi would not close down that restaurant <laughs> till i shit you not it'd be going till 2 30 in the morning Jeez. and there'd be They're maximizing dogs. revenue and profits you know so, so everybody in beverly hills just kind of <laughs> knew that like if you're in beverly hills and yeah, you needed a spot to go spot. to that the Four Seasons was the spot to go because it was the only game in town. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's how that all started. Pretty wild. It, it, it really is, even just like hearing that. But yeah, in regards to what you said with the, with the outfits, I always tell people that because people wonder like, you know, is it a bit and stuff like that? No. The first time we showed up to golf at yeah. Rancho Park... Mind you, I didn't even golf at the time. It was one of my first times. I remember I, you said to me, you're like, oh, you know, I don't have a good golf swing. And I saw this guy hit a warm-up golf swing. And it was one of the purest things I've ever seen. I was like, dude, that, that looks beautiful. And then the ball came in. It hit the <laughs> yeah, yeah, I almost, yeah, yeah. 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 He's like, no, me. Jen, I'm He's telling like, you. Me. I'm it similar. was like True, he had bro, PTSD. I had it. I'm very that similar. ball was there, it was like the entire swing change. And when he hit the warm-up swing, I was like, Dude, that's silky. Yeah, it was like, that's when I really, like, so when we did that, we, what, was three years ago, four years no, ago? like four and a half, five years ago. Yeah, so, like, I had seen golf on TV, so I just kind of knew, like, the mannerisms sure. of what <laughs> you're, good. you're a baseball player. Yeah. In general, yeah. like, the kind of get it. But, yeah, and then that's when I really started to get into it. Um, when did cold cuts come? Like, where did the cold cuts nickname the, come from? The night before that we golfed, and I wish we had a better story for it's it. It's not a crazy story. Yeah, no, I wish. Just, I mean, I, it's important. Yeah, I wish we had a better one, but the night before, we were like, all right, we're going to have a tea time. And mind you, he's there. He used to stay later in his shift, even though he could go home at like two o'clock, he would stay till like four in the morning to wait for me to go on my lunch break so that we could play ping pong in the employee's oh, room. Sick. So he'd wait like an extra two hours. That's yeah, awesome. not, so I did like a whole routine of him like being exhausted, but still waking up for some I got time. banged that one night. It was a real rough <laughs> yeah. day. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was I, a rough night. They so banged me by. I was like, you know, I knew they he was did. Italian. So I was like, we need like a name for you. Cause like, it, again, I knew I was going to put that on the story and whatnot. And I just thought of like Joey Coldcuts. So I Everybody wish Everybody started fantastic. laughing. When he said Joey yeah. Coldcuts, Joey Coldcuts is I walked good. up and all the front desk agents started cracking up. I, I was not for it. I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> And I was like, this name's never gonna, it's never gonna leave me, so. Yeah, Perez, I, I wanna, I'm gonna swing it over to you, just kinda how it came about for you. Okay. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, again, I, I wish we had kind of yeah. a better story for that, but that's just kind of the way that, that I think it, when you said that, we both just knew that was always gonna be my nickname, and it just stuck, and it's like, I, I don't know when it, when when that came out it was like yeah all right I gotta wear this because this is it's not going yeah, anywhere anytime it, soon. But before I even go to Perez, Perez said something on a podcast <laughs> that I didn't even think about. And it's so true, and you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, Mark. you were on a uh, Mikey Perez's. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, was it Mikey Perez and then <laughs> Cook's podcast? Pull hook golf. Yeah, uh, shout, out. Out. shout out, shout out. Um, yeah, I I I was like talking. They were like because it's the same question I get anytime I do those kind of podcasts, and people are like. What are those guys like? Are they like? Are they really like? Are they like that off the golf course? I'm like, oh yeah. I was like, we, we have the same rounds of golf, like off camera that we do on camera. It's just that there's a camera there. We we do the same ridiculous shit. We're the same people. It's the, I, I tell people it's like this is the easiest job in the whole world. But I, they're like, what are they like? And I'm like, well, you know, Cole Cuts is definitely you know he's competitive, he's fiery, and uh, and I was like, you know what, Bob, Bob's like, he's like content first. So. And, and like in the nicest way possible, it's just like we get in situations and like we've all been there in life where like we've been in these situations or had these conversations where it was like, God damn, I wish we had it on camera. That was completely ridiculous. And like <laughs> Bob sees that before you feel that way. And he just always has the camera going. So if he if he's like, I'm about to have this awesome, like hilarious experience, instead of just like, like, you know, most people are just like, I want I can't wait. Like this, this is going to be stupid. I can't wait to enjoy it. He's like. I gotta get the phone out. So like every time he's enjoying a moment, he's like making sure that his, like he has the camera going. So he's just content first. So like I'm sure when Cold Cuts came out, he was just like like in the red outfit you're talking about. He was, I'm sure he was just like, 
oh no 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 like hey, no no I got to get that on yeah, camera like it I couldn't just be it, it wouldn't just be something funny you would tell somebody it was just like no like I, I gotta like I've got it like yeah I've never even thought about it that way till I heard Perez say that on the podcast and then I really thought and like even back to the Vine days like yeah. I even remember when I got arrested for smoking a joint on 420 <laughs> the first thing that I thought of was in the back of the cop car and I convinced the cops not to put me in handcuffs and I was just talking with them and whatnot. And my first thing that I had was to record the experience, which is so sick. That is sick. But, but I thought about that. And, and it's like potentially it's so illegal. True. Yes, I'm sure it is. And, and I thought about nice that. And I'm like, there. I just thought about it. I'm like, yeah, he's so right. Like, I, I, I am. And it's been like that for a while. Um, but OK, so Perez, I want to send it over to you now how this whole came about. And then I'll go yeah. to, to me and Jeff. But like even before me, you got you two started Bob does sports. Like, like how did Bob, like how did, I guess people probably wonder how Bob does sports started, which was which is certainly yeah, but you before came, I even came into the you play. You came about before Bob no, does sports. He came no, at, he came after. No, no he's way way before. Yeah, he came Me? before. Yeah. But I'm saying he your really character got, was created. Oh, I, yeah. I guess that's fair. That's the story. That's that's yeah. The story. Yeah. So yeah. all right, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, yeah. No, you're you're 100 percent right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, because that two makes two different sense. things. I'm an idiot. You're talking about the happy hour. Certified idiot. So. I was um, during, you know, I'm just some dude who likes to play golf, and drink beers from Richmond, Virginia. Um, you know, just a guy, just like anybody. And um, during COVID, you know, like everybody is looking for something to do. Like my buddy turned me on to you. I don't remember exactly what video it was, but it was something ridiculous. It wasn't even golf related. And then like you, the heckling you did at Genesis of Bubble was sort of like the like, you know, like. I checked the guy out and I'm like, all right, I'm going to pay attention to this guy a little bit. But it was nothing more than like seeing your stuff on Instagram. Like I wasn't like a big social media guy or anything like that. But during COVID, I remember working late one night and instead of like getting out of there, I'm like going through my phone and I'm like looking at you. You're I just happened to see your story that like you're doing these uh, Zoom happy hours. Uh, it was like a Thursday night and it was like literally about to happen. And I was like, oh, I was like, that's interesting. Like, I got nothing going on. Like, this guy's funny. Like, if at worst, it's like background noise. And like, at best, like, maybe I, maybe I do this every week. I don't even know. And you had been doing them for a little bit. Yeah. I don't even know how, I don't early, even know how long you had been doing pretty it. Pretty early into it. When you came on, it was pretty, we ended up doing it and we still do it till this yeah. day. But when you how came on. How many do you think there were before I came in? It there had was, to be at least there was three a bunch, or four. maybe like a five. Bunch. Like, yeah. There was a decent amount, Tats, five like, to ten. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so during COVID, close. so also yeah. too the zooms, those happy hours would pop off because yeah. nobody had yeah. anything to do. No one had any reason I went on it. And we, me and Jet, you mean you were getting a lot of pressure from the employer that we were with at the time to mm -hmm. bring in more money for them. So we were trying to figure it out, and then we thought about this, and it was like a no brainer. But yeah, yeah. So we did and I mean, a few. it was because like I, I, it's never so, like, dude, if there wasn't a pandemic. I would have never, never. done yeah. something like it's that. Crazy. So I just decided, all right, I'll turn this on, and I'm like, I'm not even going to go on the video part of it because I don't know any of these fucking people. And then so I look at it, and it's like, <laughs> you know, there was like 60, 80 people in yeah. there, and in the height of COVID, when the happy hours are going on, and everyone had their video, and I was just like, am I going to be the one dude that doesn't have his video on? So I was like, all right, fine, I'll turn my video on. And then I realized I'm sitting in my office with my office behind me, and I like my real name, and for whatever reason. Now I think about it, I was like, why did I care? But at the time I was like, my employer wouldn't like if I had my name and like showed the office. So I was like, all right, what am I gonna put? And like, you know, maybe six months before that, I would gotten this Crazy. nickname at my buddy's club from this guy, Fat Perez, because oh, I was- iconic. Yeah, well, I was, you know. Iconic. I'll never I, forget I seeing Perez yeah. on that happy hour. I see yeah. the Bob, I'm like, yo, who is this guy? Yeah. In his cubicle, putting back tall yeah. boys. So I gotten this nickname from my friends Basically, that you know, I had long hair at the time, growing my hair out. Obviously, I'm fat, and then <laughs> I, you know, I've been playing pretty well. So they were like, "Oh, you look like Pat Perez out here with the flow." And the one guy was just boat racing was like, "Yeah, more like fucking Fat Perez." And obviously, everybody else loved it at the time. I wasn't like, "Oh yeah, like I, this great nickname that has fat in it." Like I'm gonna, I'm, I love this thing. So I, I like was hoping it would go away. And like, then they made golf balls of Fat Perez. And I was fucked. So, um, you know, Fat Perez basically, yeah. So at that point, I was like, all right, fine. I got to change it to something. So I just changed my like Zoom name to Fat Perez. And I'm just sitting there, like, I'm sure, because like we had multiple screens. Yeah. So the, the, the laptop that had the 
the webcam was right in front of me, but I had two screens up top. So I'm sure I was like sitting there, like looking off in the distance, like taking a beer well, drink every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, I mean, and, I could see like on the Zoom, I had to kind of like direct the Zoom of like who gets spotlighted and this and that. And Joe might have sent me a message like, look at this fat yeah, Perez I guy did. here. I absolutely did. And um, I looked over <laughs> and I was like, look at this guy. Like his name was Fat Perez on there and he's so clearly in a cubicle. There's no question about it. Like he's <laughs> on the clock. I remember. Yeah, I was working. And we you're went. Really, o yeah. I went over to you. I was like, all right, like you know, we're gonna head on over to this fat Perez guy, and you're drinking a beer. Well, no, actually, here's the thing: is I wasn't drinking a beer, and you and and you saw it. You were like, oh, we got a new face now, it's fat Perez. But you were just you were gonna you were just keeping it. You moving. were eating a pizza, maybe. No, I wasn't doing anything. I was just working, <laughs> and you were just like, this is. I literally, I have the clip. It's crazy. You were like. We got a guy, Fat Perez, and like, we're, and you were like, you were just, you just said my name, and then you were, you were moving on, but I had just like, I heard it and unmuted myself, and like me rustling just brought my face up, and you were like, you were like, oh, I guess Fat Perez has entered the chat, and then you were like, Fat Perez, like, you want to give us a toast for the people, and I was like, I was like. Fuck, I normally kept beer at my office, like in the fridge, and I had looked before this, we had no beer. And I, I usually stock the beer, so someone was drinking my beer. And in the moment, I'm like... At work. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, at you work. don't drink it two, but you can drink it five, right? Or, like, maybe 4.59. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I, I'm like, hey, man, I'd love to, you know, hey, guys, like, love to give you cheers, but, like, my asshole manager has been drinking all my beer. Like, yeah. it's kind of fucked up. I need to talk to him. Like, yeah, I guess it's his fridge, but it's my beer and, like, whatever, whatever. And you were like... And, and you were, you were, I remember this vividly, like cut over to you cold cuts and you're like, you're putting mild sauce on a burrito and you're like, <laughs> yeah, I was you, go, you go, who is this guy? He's a beauty. And you yeah. just like, <laughs> I love the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could you, I mean, we have, I have the, the, I have the video. Us, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's so it's iconic. So, and it's, we got a new character in the place that I want to get over to. Fat Perez looks like an absolute ball buster. <laughs> so we might get the fat Perez here tonight. Cameron Meacham, new character, Bren Graham. Greer, that's always good to see. Now, Fat Perez checking in here from work tonight. Um, Fat Perez. Oh, that's not good, Bob. Can you do a toast here to the brilliantly dumb faithful? Uh, my asshole manager drank all the beer in the uh, in the kitchen fridge. That, that was a new development this evening. Uh, I'm not going to have to have a little conversation about that because he certainly didn't buy the beer. Uh, it's his kitchen, I guess, but it's my beer, so. Perez, can I just we'll say that, that the flow is phenomenal. Yeah, Perez, by, by the way, I, didn't even, <laughs> I did not even see you join the Patreon. I had no idea when you came. Where did you oh, come legend. from, Perez? It's not the real name, you know? I mean, it's not it's not the billing name on the card, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Insta handle, so that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, I gotta tell you, Perez, I really like you. I think we're gonna be bringing him Perez a lot this evening. It's funny because, like, I, you, and you would post these happy hours afterwards, and like, it's just like anybody else. Like, I saw my name on the screen, and then like, it got posted online. So to me, it was like, there I am. Look, it's me. You know what I mean? So like, it didn't mean anything. And like, if you watch the video now, it's so like, it's not like this thing where you were like, that was the moment they realized. It was so like over and done. But yeah. to me, it was like. You know, this guy I kind of seen like it wasn't like a star star. Like, oh my god, I talked to B Bobby Berger. I was just like, all right, that was cool. Like, I got involved. Like that, was, like it was fun. Like it was yeah. a fun shit. You guys yeah. drank and did all shit. So I was like, I'll come back next week. Fuck it. Per and then I came back next week. I did have beer. I was yeah. like drinking Bud Heavies. Then I came back the ne like the week after with like a pizza. Yeah. So I'm just like doing all this stupid bullshit. And then it was like it was COVID, dude. Like I all I could do was work play golf and then like this is the thing i had to look forward to yeah and, and it I, was like I, I i texted bob after the first happy hour that you were in i yeah. was like this Perez guy is something. Like there was something. <laughs> yeah, there. You really, you were, yeah. Did you really feel that? Seems... No, because I knew you had something. Like you, you were so your like the same way you are now. Yeah. You were you were in the cubicle. You're like yeah, I fucking hate my job. I'm just like drinking at my job. <laughs> like, funny. Yeah. I love so... my job. By the way. <laughs> no, I know. Just for the record, I, I love my like, job. You were like my boss. Like he left, so I'm just yeah. drinking here. Like it was very the same. It, nothing's changed. Like yeah. the exact same. And the same guy, we all saw it, and we're like there's something there and yeah. then it just kind of panned out so essentially that i would do that for a little bit and then these guys you know because you post like that, that's the cool th this is kind of sidebar but the cool thing i hope that you guys all see is that like when we like our day-to-day -day lives like we put that shit online yeah, like we are. what we're doing when we're traveling so like especially when you're traveling right yes and so i saw just your you guys stuff that you were coming to the east coast coming to north carolina right. to uh like play golf with our with our boy back nine chuck 
And I just, I was just happened to be in Pinehurst that weekend with my wife, or I was going to be, I was leading up to it, right? So I text, I hit Joe on the DMs. I didn't text him, he didn't have, te even have Joe's number. I just hit him on the DMs. I probably didn't even hit you. I don't even know. Hit Joe. It was something about Joe. And, and this, and, and Joe will say this to me like, you're my guy. Like Joe's like, oh, always Joe's always said guy. like, you're my guy. And I, I don't even know where that came from, but I just like in my mind, for some reason, I just thought I'm going to text, I'm going to DM Joe about this. So I'm like, what's up guy? Like, Hey, saw you're coming to Pinehurst. Like you're coming to North Carolina. Like, Hey, no big deal. Just like I'm in, I'm in Pinehurst with my wife this weekend. Like it'd be cool to link up for a drink. Like if not, no big deal, but thought I'd like say something. Right. And you, and I, you, I don't know what you, your reaction to that was, but um, I mean, I said to Bob, as soon as you hit me up, I said, Bob, I said, you know, we're going to be here. It's like, this guy is, is, is a, he's a, he's a beauty. I said, we should try to connect with him even for a drink. Yeah. I said, I'd, I lo I'd love about. to connect with him. What I loved about the way that you hit me up is like, you were just like, yo, you know, if not, you know, no worries, yeah, but you're so deal. chill about it. You're like, I'd love to have a drink with you. And I was like, absolutely, man. This guy seems like a, well, an yeah. absolute legend. Like, I wasn't trying to like get dinner with you or like, let's play golf. Like I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, I actually had golf planned quite frankly from when I was there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, I'm not in Pinehurst with like an open time. Right. So it was just like, if you guys want to link up for fucking beers, like, or not, like, I don't but care. It's the, not a big deal. The, go ahead. Yeah. So, and then. So you guys were there. You, you might have been there. You guys, I think you got to Pinehurst on Sunday. Yeah. And then you were there uh, till Monday, Monday, maybe Tuesday. But it was like um, I was there with my wife. And when I hit you up previously, I kind of thought it might happen. And I knew it would happen on Sunday. So we drove separately, her and I. I was like, <laughs> which is which is so which is so ridiculous. I now looking back on it, but like I was like, hey babe, like I think like I know we're going to Pinehurst, but it's like I think we should take separate cars. And she's like. Why on earth would we do that? It's three hours away. I was like, well, I've been in touch with Joey Coldcuts, and him and I might link up for uh, a beer on Sunday. And like, I don't know if you want to hang around. Like, we obviously we check out at eleven, so like, I don't know what you're gonna do. I'm gonna go play golf. I don't know what you're gonna do. And she was just like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, you're an idiot. So she, we did drove set. We drove yeah. separate, and I had so I was playing. I, I checked out of Pinehurst Inn, where you guys were staying on Sunday. And I played golf that morning, and you guys had as well. Yes. And uh, we were going to, like, link up. Maybe you, you had said at some point, you are like, we might hit the cradle up. Um, we'll let you know. So once I got done with golf, I, like, booked a, some bullshit hotel. And I was like, all right, I can either go check into this place and, like, wait for a text or just, like, whatever. Or I was like, well, I'll just go up to the putting green at Pinehurst. And that way, like, when he's, like, if he's, like, hey, we're, we're cradle in 10 minutes. I'm like there, right? Or if he's like, I want to get a drink. So like, I had nothing else. So it was either sit in a fucking hotel room or I'll just go putt and smoke a cigar. Like, even if they don't hit me up, like, it's dope. So I walk out there. I like drop a couple putts. I'm smoking a cigar, hitting some putts. And I hear, I think I heard your laugh, cold cuts. Yeah. From like walking away from like yeah. the from, cradle. From Virginia. Yeah, from the cradle <laughs> bar. And I'm like, I look over and I'm like, I was like, there they are. And I was like, all right, what are, like, do I just walk over there? Or like, do I just putt? And then it like, I saw you. You I saw me immediately, over. and I was like, "Oh, that's kind of crazy." There's like, footage in the moment, of this. I'm like, I'm wearing a pink quarter zip, and I'm there's you know, pants, pink pants. No, no, uh, I had a pink, pink, pink quarter, quarter zip. There's, there's, yeah, there's, there's footage. Quarter there's, quarter footage there's footage. Of there's footage there of there is. Bob Correct, filmed cause, it because yeah, again, Bob's content first. Yeah. So when Bob sees me walk up, his first in inclination, which I remember in the moment being like, "I'm about to, I'm about to like meet these guys," and Bob's more interested. He's like, he's like hanging back on the meetup. With this phone, I'm like, that's kind of bizarre. So, stuff. like, yeah, we got the whole like dap of like Joey Cole cuts and like him talking. Then you like put the phone down. And we're like, hey, I'm Bob. Like, well, right. ladies and gentlemen, that is a Patreon faithful member right there. There's there our guy is. showing up to the golf course. <laughs> is Fat Perez What's out of up, nowhere? How did you play? All right. I love having this stuff. Yeah. On film, I love going back and like looking at this stuff, and I love documenting all of this stuff and it turns out i mean to have that video yeah is the coolest thing but you know and then jed i want to get over to you about how you came into it but when we were at dinner with back nine chuck who took us there yeah. we're all having dinner and perez wasn't going to play with us the next day and we were playing pinehurst number two which is like the most iconic course out of them all and we had an extra spot and then it kind of got brought up and then back nine chuck said to you he's like What's your handicap? Well, yeah. So we we had drinks. We had a good time out on the patio. Yes. And then you were like, just like come have dinner with us. And I was like, all right, fine, fuck it. I don't have anything going on. <laughs> and you, you guys, like, you saw me putting. Like, obviously, so you knew I played golf. But, like, 
you, you, you like you barely even knew I did, and yes. it, like it hadn't come up to that point that like you know I, yeah I play golf like, I'm not bad like, and it, yeah it came up it was like I wasn't even gonna play it was just like what's your handicap, at the time I was like yeah I'm like a one like two whatever, back nine Chuck's like, like what looks at me he's like no no, no you're not <laughs> like. We're like, what are you? I'm like, yeah, I kind of am. Like, and whatever. And he's like, well, <laughs> Very and, and you guys, body. and I, I think I went to the bathroom and you guys like looked at him like, we got to Like, we got to see You're this like, shit. This guy's like, a two. Yeah, There's that no guy. Line. Yeah, if that guy's a fucking two, he, we got to get that shit on video. And then, uh, yeah, so you were like, come play with a smart plane four in the morning, two in the afternoon. It was a Monday. And I was like, I can't fucking... I can't do both. Like, I'll try to get to the afternoon round, and I'll, like, we'll figure it out. You did, like, a cameo for my boss who followed you yeah, and shit. Yeah, to get you out of yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, I linked up with, with you. Yeah, he back nine. But, you know, another thing, like, couldn't have joined Zoom. And, like, if back nine's like, fuck this guy. I don't know who the fuck this yeah. is. He's not playing golf with us. And I would have been like, oh, hey, that was cool. And, like, nothing would have ever. Probably would all just sort of seemed away, but blessed black nine Chuck's heart. The the face, I'll never forget. I told, still remember it till this day. The face on back nine Chuck when Fat Perez said, I'm a two, it's like he dropped his silverware. He like <laughs> he was like, wait, you're, you're a two? And the next thing you know, he comes out to Piners two, and he just absolutely he shot like one or two over. crazy. Yeah, I had a pretty good round. I mean, it was like dead. You started out yeah. slow too, Perez. I yeah. remember you started slow, and I was like, Bob, I don't know if this guy's bullshitting us. or. And then all of a sudden, like, by nine, he was, like, even par. Yeah, and it was, like, crazy. the quietest, like, just good round because he was just drinking so much and smoking stogies. <laughs> and, like, we didn't even realize he was parring every hole and, like, by the end of it, I think it was like one or two over on the round. It was unbelievable. Yeah, I played pretty. It was it was like winter. I don't even remember exact. I think it was. I don't even know what time of year it was, but like, it was. It Piners two is already tough, but like when it's like dormant, it like gets even faster. Like especially around the greens, it gets very tight and like. So I didn't like look like I played. But I, that was probably that's to like when I think back, it's probably the best r short game round of golf I've ever played. I hit some shots around. Mind you, that's that a, those that's greens during yeah when there was brown that like the caddy was just i was like the only way i can play is if i bump it into this hill and roll it this way he's like and manny man remember manny he was manny, like yeah he's like mr perez if you can do that and i like hit the <laughs> shot and like was unbelievable and and I, he looked at me, he was like who the fuck are you like, meanwhile my caddy was all over the place <laughs> trying to keep up with yeah, my own yeah, shots you know blast I had the, the at the round. time i had the round of my life i, I too. remember yeah you were playing that, yeah. you shot, eight, you shot yeah. 84 yeah, yeah that's at, amazing at pinehurst that's too remember that. which like you would take that now. Like in 84 yeah. is a good score. You played, you great, played great. Yeah, it was crazy. It's funny, just all the backstories of how it all came about. There's nothing like simple about it. It's no. all, everything. It was it, meant to be. Yeah, man. It, it's crazy. Yeah, and, and then I came out to LA and I played golf with him for a couple of days. And you like, we had, we just had dinner. Your, your brother was in town. So like yeah. you couldn't golf, but you like, you just have this knack for like getting me on your story and like I got hammered at dinner and like you're hanging out after and you're just like you're just video me and like shocking videos and you're just like this guy's not next level so like and then everyone's like who is this fucking guy yeah. like, what Vegas is this dude he's on you so yeah so that just that just bumped my following up like there's all these things that just kind of like kept building and in my mind I'm like this is ridiculous like I'm not I'm not there's nothing here like for this this is just like fun for me like I could like go play golf with them or like I get to go out and play, play golf. Like none of these things were like. I still wasn't thinking like it's cool to be with these guys. Like, and no offense to you guys, it's just not the Fuck way I. I'm guys. not the way. <laughs> it's just not the way I am. I'm not. I'm not like. Oh my god, that's Mick Jagger. Like I just don't. I don't feel that way. So, but it was just like experiences. I got to like play golf that I might not have already, and like we had fun. Like I we we hit it off in Pinehurst, right? And I just yeah. knew we were going to keep having fun. And then back nine took Chuck took us to Vegas in January of this year. Mm -hmm. I remember celebrating. Remember we were celebrating. Well, I was celebrating five thousand followers at that time in January Crazy. with back nine Chuck. Same shit. You kept me on your story. We played Shadow Creek. I played like phenomenal golf. And it was just like, I kept telling myself like, if I, you know, if these things happen, I'll keep going a little bit. I like started some merch like way too early, but like to me, <laughs> yes. like I'm glad I, you know, I had merch, I had a merch and website. Like a hundred million dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it was like, yeah. it was. I changed my Instagram to Fat Perez just yeah. from like, like Stubby, whatever, you whatever. You it though, which is what Did. you had to I do. did, but like, it's still like, 
like, I, I don't know. Like it, there's a point where like when you're trying to get started and you have to go all in and like at the very beginning, it's like when um you, you decide you want to grow your hair out mm. and there's a period between like short yeah. hair and long hair. That's just, you look stupid. Like an idiot. You look like an idiot, but yeah. like, you just have to get through that shit because yeah. people are looking at you like, Oh, <laughs> like, Oh, Perez is trying to make it like Nick, Nick Stubby, like Stubby's trying to make it on Insta yeah. golf Instagram. Like this guy's lost the plot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like, you got to get through that. Like people yeah. like, and I've looked at people that I went to high school with like chicks, like, Oh, another chick. She's Oh th yeah. This is going to be the food blog that really, <laughs> yeah. she's really going to make it. You know what I mean? So I'm like conscious of like, people are looking at me and like, this guy's an idiot. Like, so like I got, I had to get through that shit on my own. Right. And then, and th you know, I'm probably taking over here. I'm sorry. But like then, um, foreplay wanted to do a match and it was just the two of you guys. So I'll, I'll let you go from there. Cause that that's after Bob does sports, but yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, so. but again, like we were saying like that, that really was kind of the coming out party, but again, to watch, I mean, from my perspective, to watch all of you guys just kind of blossom into like mm. key key pieces of the show to where you can't have the show without you guys has been so much fun from joe's you know joe's rise and yours but one of the most enjoyable things for me the jet because the <laughs> jets start and how that all came about to me is one of the most enjoyable i get so much joy out of watching the jet thrive so, Jet, I want to take it over to you, kind of yeah. how, from your standpoint, how it all started for you. This so, okay, to, to the this. best of my, first of all, I will say about Perez, your story, you came to L.A. and we put you in a Bob Does Sports when it came out. We were supposed to get you in two Bob Does Sports. We only got you in one because of time, and it was you against them, and it went off. Yeah, well, that Pelican was, Hill. so that's, Pelican when, Hill. that's yeah. when I came out yeah. because Barstool wanted to collab. On oh, match, so we did it beforehand. Right? And there yeah, was yeah. just the two of them. And they were like, all right, they were like, Fat Perez, like, who are we going to get to fill out a foursome for the screen? They're like, they hit, you hit me up and you're like, Perez, we're doing this yeah, and, and I need you. And I was sort of like, it, and I was still just like, oh, like, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this match with four play pod that's going to go on YouTube that like, I'll just be like, your, your, your father had, 50, you know, you like, tell my grandkids, like, grandfather had 15 minutes fame on the internet, kids, gather around. Like, I still thought it was just like a yeah. shot, you know, it was just be a cool experience, right? But that's why I came, that's when I came out, it was for that. Right, okay. So we went up here, we came back, then we like filmed that too, yeah. essentially. So, okay, so to the best of my knowledge, because it's all fuzzy at this point, it's all a blur, to be honest. Yeah, well, oh, now it is. Yeah, 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 yeah right now it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we we got Roy Orbison over here, folks. Jets I'm, had a couple. I'm, I'm wearing sunglasses, so you can, you know. Okay, this is about two and a half years ago. It was before COVID. I was in, I was living in New York and I moved back to Chicago and I always was like, I was always doing, I had a regular job and I was always like doing side hustles or doing like shit on the internet. I always was involved in social media. I used to like build accounts and like sell them. And like, I just used to do like all this shit on social media. And I always had wanted to get involved in that, like for my life, like to do like for a career or whatever. So I was working, well, to go back, I was working in New York. I had the shittiest job of all time. I would answer phones. <laughs> It was called you. No, you listen, know, listen. Was, listen. Was so it was called. It was called corporate sales. Essentially, it was customer service, and I would oh sit there. Oh my god! Chad and customer <laughs> service. Oh my I would answer god. the phone, and they, it was always it was for like an electronics company, <laughs> and they would call, and they'd be like, "Yo, like my my TV is cracked." And I'm like, I didn't give a shit. Yeah. And I was imagine like, imagine losing that lottery so, on a customer service call, and you get jet on the other end. So Talk I used about to, just losing a scratcher. So at no first response. I was like yeah. into it, and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Like, let me solve this guy's TV issue, and then I realized like. We all get paid the same amount, whether fucking I solve his issue or I don't. So, yeah, that's true. So I yeah. used to, and like a lot of people when they call customer service are like pissed off or like they're having all these issues or they like give you some sob story or they're like, oh my, like whatever, I'll never buy from you again. As if like the money from their TV goes yeah. into my pocket. Yeah. Like I give a fuck. So I don't they, own this company, <laughs> ma'am. Listen, no, I'm saying that's just whatever. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. No, I'm saying it's like a classic like work for the man, yeah. whatever. Oh, your TV's so broken. I used to buy just, another like, one. Pass them off or whatever. So I hated the job, and I had previous all this work in social media. So I ended up getting another job in social media. I was tweeting, and I don't want to get too in, too involved in it, but I was basically tweeting like about sports for like the night shift of some like uh, company, and I ended up. 
So I quit my job and I was doing that. But while I was doing that, I was always looking for like what I'm gonna do. So I used to like look on social media all the time to try to find people to try to work with. I used to always wanna work at Barstool. Like that was my thing, like Barstool. So I, if, you're, if you work at Barstool or if you work anywhere and you are in sports or in comedy or whatever, there's a DM for me somewhere buried in your <laughs> inbox. I'm not even kidding. But I noticed that like, I always wanted to like stand out. So I used to, instead of just being like, hey, hire me, I, I used to like make videos for people and I would send it to them. Granted, I, smart. I was not Brilliant. good. I wasn't good at making video. Like I was like learning my way and I knew that if I like kept working, whatever, I'd figure it out. So I ended up back in Chicago and it was the first, it must've been like the first week I was back when it was pre COVID. I was like, New York like wasn't really like working out. I went back to Chicago and I saw, I had seen Bob's stuff before because of the Bubba Watson and because of just like the bathroom stall. Like I had seen it. I hadn't necessarily pieced it together, but you came up on my explore page again. And I was like, okay, I know who that is. It was like a hilarious video, but it was like very clear that like he needed some help. Like, it's like <laughs> I'm saying like, it was a production, production shortcoming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like okay. black and white or some shit. <laughs> so I was like, is that filmed on a razor? <laughs> so I'll tell you when I, when I saw that video and I saw like, I don't remember exactly what it was. It was like, you were in a car, you were talking. I, I knew right there. I was like, this is the fucking guy. This like, this help. is my guy. This is who I'm at. So I, I looked through what you're doing. I found out you, I saw your podcast. I saw uh, all this stuff. And I'm, you just did an interview with Bob Menery. Yep. So I made a clip for it. Now, granted, it might be the worst clip of all time. Okay? I would I made kill a clip. to see that it clip. Was, no, it was like Bob Menery talking about sitting courtside at the Lakers. And I was like, fuck it. I'll make a clip. Like, he's the guy. Like, I can tell. Like, we, we had, I was laughing my ass off at the video. I was like, I know, like, this is somebody I could, like, work with. And so I sent you the video. No response. Okay? Mm. Sounds about right. A couple, a, I was like, hey, like, like um, I'm trying to get my involved. Here's a video for you. Like you can step up your social media game, whatever. A couple weeks later, but I, I knew like when I saw it, I was like, this is the fucking guy. So like a week later, Bob posted something. It's probably like fucking cold cuts, like running around in like a circus outfit or something. <laughs> and I and I come, I replied back and I wrote like funny shit or something. I wrote I wrote something back to him, and then he saw then that. Then he saw the clip before. And then he scrolled up yeah. and he re you replied. You said something like. Thanks, man. And then you were like, oh, just saw the clip above. Like, let's keep in touch, whatever. And then that night or a night later, you had an interview with Darren Williams. Darren Williams, yep. And, and you texted me. You're like, can you make me a few clips for Darren Williams? Now, I had like never made like clips, essentially. Like I had, but I, I didn't know what I was doing. And I stayed up all night. It was, it was. <laughs> how many YouTube was, videals did you watch? Like oh, how, I to, make, like, how, how to make like, how to make the perfect how clip? How to put captions on a video. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So I made, I made him three videos. I stayed up all night from like 12 AM to like 8 AM. And I sent you them at 8 AM. I went to bed. What, and then, <laughs> and then I. <laughs> Are we just gonna gloss oh, over gross. that? What do you, you mean? Are, are you a bat? Well, no, but I knew. No, no, no. But I knew, like, when Bob was like, "Can you make these videos for the for the Jaron Williams you, you podcast?" You now. I was like, I was okay. like, this is my chance. I wasn't gonna wait around. I was sure. like, this is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made them. I stayed up all night. It was like, what was like, like whatever. I stayed up all night. I sent him the videos, and then from that moment on, you, I think you realized you're like, okay, these are great. And he's this quit. guy has potential. Now, the thing is, I wasn't quick back then because I didn't know what it, he probably thought I was quick because he went to bed and woke up and they were there, but it took me eight <laughs> hours. And then, <laughs> so, so then, no harm, no foul. then you used, so you were like, okay, like this is great. And you would just ask me to do stuff once in a while. Now I didn't, you were, can we talk about the people you were working yes, with? Yeah. So Bob was with Bro Bible. And yeah. I didn't know. So at the time, I'm like, I'm this guy's fucking agent. Like, we're going all the way. Like, <laughs> like, fucking, I, thought was, I thought I was like, Drew I thought Rose I was an Ari Gold. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I was like fucking like, yeah, Medellin, whatever. <laughs> so, fucking new, new deal for you, exactly. Bob. Exactly. So I didn't know he was like all set up because, again, the original production on the video was screaming like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Not to me. No, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not to me. So... <laughs> So he got me connected. I, I made videos essentially for you for a month or two. And, and let me, because like the whole thing about me is that like, you talk about me like I'm some sort, which is true. Like I'm like very, I'm like a tyrant essentially, right? Kinda, like yeah. he's just like, it's my way. Like I just, I thought I knew everything, bro. I didn't know shit. I was like, you gotta do this, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. And you believe me, but it's, it's almost because the timing was so perfect because Nobody had made videos for you before. If you had like seen videos or known what a good video looks like, you would have been like, this guy's an idiot. But the fact that you had like, I was the first guy who made a video for you. You're like, somebody's making a video for my podcast. Yeah. You're like, this is fucking awesome. So he got me connected with Bro Bible. 
and then they signed me essentially to just do the Brilliantly Dumb show and all the clips. But I was also helping you with all your other shit. Yeah. So, and then we just kind of like, I, I don't really know how it happened, but it just I just kind of became the guy, like for everything. Yeah, because there was so much content that we had going back and forth that right. I really did, and what you said earlier is true, I really did need somebody because there was so much content that we were doing and like I had nobody to handle it. The guy that we had at the time, you'll remember, great guy, but intern Edwards. Yes. And he just wasn't ready for yeah, the moment. He'd be like, oh, I got a concert to go to, so I can get you that yeah. by Monday. So, yeah. yeah, and that's Sorry. actually how you got, and you know, that's how you got the name of the Jet was right. because I sent him that interview of Darren Williams and he sent back the clips. You woke up and it was there. It was, yeah. yeah, and it was so, I mean, he always bashes his work. It was so good. And there was clip after clip Bob told after me clip. too. He's like, yo, there's this guy. <laughs> Sense shit like fucking wow. So I knew because I put this guy's out, shit videos. I asked him this and it's fucking there, man. This guy's <laughs> like a jet. It's just take it off. Because I knew. Who is this jet? I knew. I was like, of all the people I DM'd, I knew this was the opportunity. I was like, this is it. So like, go 100% in. Like fucking, I used to make random videos. I'd be like, do this, do that. Like, here's this. Here's a different video. Here's a different style. Here's whatever. So I was with Bro Bible via you and doing all your other stuff. And then I'm trying to think. We left, you left Bro Bible, yeah. we went to Action, Action Park, Park Media. and I just kind of like became, like I just became your guy, like I was helping you with whatever you needed. It's a package and deal. Yeah, it, was, it basically became a package yeah. deal. And then, so we went to Action Park for an hour and a half, and then, <laughs> and then we left, and then we went back, we went back to nothing. We went back to the Brilliantly Dumb Show, and we went back, we started the Pantry Boys. Yeah. So we were doing two podcasts, all your social media, your TikTok, your whatever. We just like kind of like, kept growing and you were getting bigger at the time. And then at that time you started getting more kind of brand deals involved. So you really realized like we can take this on our own. Like we can do it together and like bring people in and like make it work like for ourselves. That. Yeah. Without, without, without like a, yeah, without somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You, but like also too, the craziest thing about the jet is like, which people don't see and why I've always been like so loyal to them and will scratch and claw for the jet is during that time, like, and don't get me wrong, Bro Bible was great, but then we left, and then we knew when we got over to Action Park Media, me, Jersey Jerry, who I, who I brought over there, and then the Jet, instantly were like, we got a problem. Like, we got to get out of here. Like, it's just not a good environment for us. We weren't enjoying it. It was a little hostile. Like, it just, it wasn't the place for us. We thought it was going to be the best thing at the time. So... I said to Jet, I was like, look, I, I got to leave. The problem is I, I didn't have, he was getting paid by them. I didn't have any money at the time to pay the Jet. Like I, to pay Jersey Jerry. So Portnoy came back in for yeah. Jersey Jerry. I couldn't, I tried something to compete with him. I, there's nothing. I didn't have the money for it. So I always thought, I'm like, oh, geez, like Jets, I'm going to lose the Jet now. Like it's all crumbling. So when I left Action Park Media, the first week I was like, I'm, I was miserable because I was like, everything's collapsing. Like I have no money to pay these guys. I'm gonna have to do it on my own. I, I, I can't edit any of this stuff. And Jet, rather than like just leave and knowing, and I told him straight up, I was like, I don't have any money, but I promise like I'll figure something out. You would think that he would have like slowed down on the work that he would have done for me. He ramped it up even more than he was already doing. That's love. Yeah, it yeah, is. Slow. That's love. Yeah, but I, I knew we had been through enough. Like all the cool shit we had done, we had been through enough. Where it was like the, we, there were a lot of, there were a lot of highs and there were a lot of lows yeah. throughout the whole process. So it's like we were really in it together to the point where I knew, we both knew it was gonna get to this at some point. So we both knew just keep following the path. Like I had, I was side hustling, I was like doing other jobs, I was whatever. But I knew like this was it. Like just because we had left Bro by, we left Action Park, it was like. Somebody else is going to come or we're going to make it by ourselves. And then you guys used to DM me all the time. You're like, you got to move to LA. You're like, I you got to, you used to phone. DM me. Yeah. You talked to me on the called, phone. You called me when I was at Peninsula. I was at the pool closing up one day and I'm like, Jed, I swear to God, you come to LA, we're all going to make it. <laughs> That's exactly good. what I, I told him. I was like, exactly he's, like yeah. he's like, you know, cut. You know, I, you Trust thinking me. about coming. I was like, yo, bro, you come out here. It's a game changer, man. That's going to change the game. So we're good. all going to make it. We're going to be huge. And yeah. you're like, yeah, I know. I really want to come. I'm like, you got to come to LA. They pushed me and I Nobody waited. I was more than cutting. I was, so I, I had moved believed. during COVID. I moved back to New York and I was waiting for my, essentially like my lease to end. I had like whatever, however many, and I was like, once my lease ends, I'm gonna move to LA. And Bob the Sports didn't exist. No. So 
I was going to move to LA for the Brilliant Dump Show and I was just going to still like side hustle, whatever, but I would be closer. And I knew if we were all closer together, we would just kind of make it go yes. off even more. So then a few months before I was going to leave, um, Bob was like, these guys, like, he's like, like, we're starting, like, we want to start Bob Does Sports. We have an opportunity here. And I was like a little wary of it because I was like, I was always steady on the Brilliantly Dumb Show being like, continue to grow that. And he's like, no, like, we're doing Bob Does Sports. It's a huge opportunity, whatever. And I was, that changed everything too. Because that went from me moving to LA to the Brilliantly Dumb Show to like, now we're traveling around the country every week. Because yeah. people, some people don't know, Bob Does Sports was not a golf show at first. Yes. It was a travel show interviewing people. So they sporting every week, it's like major we, events, right? Yeah, like major sporting experience. Yes. So the first day is funny. Sorry, I was, I, was I, never attainable. I, I we went back have home. Oh, you would have re, you would have flown yourself into the we ground. Couldn't have done it. So we listen, done it. I went back home to Chicago to just stay with my parents before I moved to LA for a few weeks. From Chicago, I drove to Milwaukee. I brought all my shit. I had two suitcases and I had a fucking backpack <laughs> no. and I had a million um, uh, electronics that I had no idea how to use. <laughs> and I and I'm telling you, we moved, I went to Wisconsin. We met at the rock. Well, Bob had come to New York a few months earlier, and this is another story. He's like, "I'm coming to New York. Like, let's meet." Because I worked remote for him for two years. Essentially, we met at the Northern Trust. He's like, "I want to make a heckle video." So we met there and we kind of just like hit it off. Like we could tell right away. Like we we're just like friends. Like we could tell. So Bob tells the story a little differently. Well, no, he <laughs> tells, oh, no, no, it, it, yeah, he it was tells the, it. Yeah, it was the Northern <laughs> Trust. But what I, I, at first I was confused, and then I, now that I know the Jet, and then I learned to love it. Like when I first met the Jet, I thought there'd be like, hey man, like great seeing you, and we would chat for like 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> jet met me, we said hello, and he's like. Let's get down to business. Like, let's go start yeah, using my like, He should, He's like, we just hit it off. We, just, we got right to work. And he was just like, no, he stonewalled Bob and just said, it's time to fucking he, work. He, what happened. he just like shook my hand. Like we set it up. Like we had been talking for a year every more, day. More, yeah. More than that. And it's like, let's get down to business. And now knowing Jet and looking back, it's so funny because he's just like, let's get down to business. I don't have time to small talk. Let's go. <laughs> and yeah. I mean, so yeah. So we did the Northern Trust. I By the end of the Northern Trust, when we left, we were like friends. We were like yes, tight by the yes. end because we it was a great time. We got all the videos and we got all the heckling. And then we left. And then I, so I went back to Chicago. I, I, I went to Wisconsin. I met you at the Ryder Cup. And then I moved from literally from the Ryder Cup. I moved to L.A. And we were doing Bob the Sports and me and you, we essentially, we talked about this before, we had no idea what we were doing. None. They were like, hey, go here and make a video. And we're like, all right, fuck it. So we would go to this Ole Miss, we'd go to Vegas. the World Series, we'd go to Vegas and we just like film, make a video. Buffalo. And I had no idea. I didn't know what I was doing. Like I didn't have so much experience with camera equipment. I knew how to edit a little bit, like, but but I, I just knew that if we like kind of stuck to the process, like I'd figure it out. I've always figured it out. Like, so that's essentially what we did. And then when it changed into, well, the other thing is when I moved to LA, I, I, I went to Bob's house, Bob's apartment literally every single day from about day. I, I, 8 a.m. to midnight. And I would fucking sit there and edit and we would chill. And like, we became really good friends through that. And like Bob would, like I had no money and Bob would buy me food. He'd like buy lunch, he'd buy dinner. And like, we just kind of became like super tight. And you were at the hotel, but you would do the same thing. And then we just like I don't know it just like it just kept growing and growing and then it turned into golf. Well, the golf's well, kind of random too. Like well, that no, wasn't even supposed to happen. It, it was what? never yeah. supposed to be golf. But what happened is I think there was an event that Bob couldn't make um, for one of the Bob Does yep. Sports episodes, and I, I'll never forget. He called me and he's like, "Yo, cuts, I need you to help me out." And I was like, yeah, sure. What do you, you know? I was always in Bob's corner since day one. I was always like, if I can help get Bob to a point where he gets big enough, you know, then, you know, I, I always thought maybe I'd be his manager or I'd help out or there'd be a role for me. Stay off my turf. I'm his, I'm, yeah. I was going to be his <laughs> Fair enough. But I always figured that there'd be, we were so close. I always figured there'd be a place where I would somehow be involved and it could somehow benefit me as well. And we could just be friends working together. So he hit me up. He's like, there was an event I was supposed to do for this Bob does sports thing. I was well aware of it. You guys had already done like the Vegas episode. You'd done the Atlanta episode yep. for the world series. And he couldn't make the event. And he goes, let's just do one of our golf videos because people don't realize we've been making golf videos for yeah. years. Right. Yeah, the and brilliant, we're like the golf things vlogs, out. right? Yeah, we do yeah. golf vlogs yeah. and we put On them out phone. and some did okay. Yeah, it's crazy. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I remember he picked me up and Jet wasn't even actually filming that episode. It was another camera guy. Well, I was, I hadn't moved yet. Yeah. And um, so we pick, he picked me up. We went to Trump LA and we filmed the video. And I'll never forget, we put it out and it did better than any Anything. of the other videos by far. 
So Bob was like, you know, maybe we should just try to do another one. So we did another video that went off as well. And it was like, then I think our company, like the doing things guys were worried that we were becoming too golf centric. And Bob and I were like, no, I think this is perfect it's for working. what we want to do because we can find a little niche and we can yeah. establish ourselves. And I'll never forget the video that to me really set it off, which you were involved with, which really one of the first videos before we went to Scottsdale or anything was the links of Victoria. You had no idea. And wow. that video just fucking popped. And from that moment on, it's like, this is what Bob does sports it's, is about. Yeah. It's so funny because I remember Links of Victoria. I remember when we filmed it and we came home, we're like, whatever, like another video. I just remember that was like the first day I was using the GoPro and I was losing my shit because I couldn't get it to <laughs> yeah. the car oh, and I couldn't geez. get it to the cart. And I was like, this oh, is exact. Boy. It was like, it was, it was stressful for me at the beginning. Like now we've got it, it's still stressful, but we got it like under control for the most part. Like we know our rhythms and we know everything. But, and I was even thinking about this the other day and I think about it a lot is that with us four and specifically me and you and, and us three at the beginning, there's no, like, it wouldn't have worked any other way. Like us, our three personalities just kind of make it work Meshed. in the sense that you guys can hand, like you guys, like anybody else, if I was, like if I was the way I am in like a workplace or, or, or I'm saying, I'm not even kidding. Yeah, man, working day, true. You'd be like, they'd be like, fuck this guy. Like, yeah. he, you know what I mean? But you guys kind of understand it and you know how to handle it and how to deal with it and how to do, how to make me no as, one, as successful as I can be yeah. via you. But no one is more intrinsically involved and works harder than the jet. Yeah. 100%. And to me, I will deal with your shit and always be there for you because no, and I'm not trying to say that you're a no. handful, but the thing is, it's like, I know that Jet is always going to make us yeah, better. Correct. So for me, it's like, if I have yeah. to like walk this guy off a ledge or if I have to like talk yeah. him up or like kind of just be there and be like a shoulder to lean on, I'm going to do it because without Jet. Yeah we never would be where we are today. And that is absolutely bottom but line. It's the true. Yeah, and it like cuts, you're right about that. Cause it's like anytime the jets mad or he's frustrated or he's ready to like light the world on fire, it's because he's unable to do his best job for us. Yes. yes. So like, that's the reason he's or mad. Or he realizes so like that he's we're just mad a bunch of for the, He's mad for all the right reasons. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. he's just trying to, and I'm trying to make this goddamn video as like as great as possible for us to look good. And it's like, it's pissing me the fuck off. And I'm like, stay mad, brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's figure yeah, this yeah, thing out, but yeah, don't yeah. lose that fire. And trying to do it. Like, Cause the worst thing that could happen is he's like, the worst <laughs> day that we could win. The, dude, seriously, the worst day that could ever happen is where Jet's just like, uh, everything's all good. Cause you're like, you're oh right. shit, he's phoned it in. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't care I'm anymore. I'm trying to direct yeah, chaos. Too. I mean, like, Je I, I guess technically you could say that I'm your boss and I will let you. There are times where you will tee off on me and I just wear it. Because I'm yeah. like, what you said is true, Joe. It's like, if he's freaking out, it's because that yeah. he can't make, like, he's he doing everything so that he possibly 100%. can to make the show better. So, I think we all agree. It's like we all just kind of wear it. Like yeah, he'll, he'll shoot Listen, us out. I'm telling you, the worst thing that could ever happen is Jet. It's <laughs> just like, like no, nah, everything's all good, dude. You're, you're like, we're fucked. <laughs> like he, the guy doesn't give a shit anymore. It'd be like Florida State football. You know what I mean? It's just like it's just, so, it's just over. Like we, we had a good run and shit's over. Yeah, it, yeah. But it, for as much as you say, like, like take my shit, which is true. Like you said, yeah. I when I moved here, it's like. I had no money. We weren't making any money None at the of start. Us had money. I'm saying, and I was, I was just trying to make, to get to where we are now. And I knew kind of how to get there. And I was like, let's just fucking do it. But again, to my point, it's like, you two are so, you have the- The sauce? Perfect, well, they have the sauce for sure. Yeah, some people say, yeah. Yeah, some people say they have the drip as well. You get but the drip. They, no cap. They, they have the perfect person. We have the three, perfect yeah. personalities to 100%. clash like and not clash but kind of totally yeah. yeah. into each other it's like yeah. they deal with my yeah. my shit and i deal 100%. with theirs and like if i was working for anybody else who was an influencer or whatever but also bob has a lot of and i, I know it's true like for everything we've been through up and down you trust me 100 percent. so it's like you know what difference. we're doing like, yeah the bottom line and then bob you can finish i have to say this is i think well bob and i since day one we always believed which is crazy because we do we just really did our own thing. We always, always believed since day one that what we had and the connection that we had was the formula for success. And I used to always use an analogy and some of my analogies are not good, but this one True. I always believe, I used to say, Bob, I'm like, we're like an oil field 
that's not yet been tapped into. And <laughs> once someone realizes the gold that, or well, not gold, but the oil that is there and the value that we bring, mm -hmm. it's going to pop. And then when you came in and you believed it, and then I think the difference was Perez always never really saw how he fit in. And so I always was like, dude, you're an essential part of this. And when you bought into the system and you realize all four of us realized like, this has the formula to work and we believed in this so much and we knew that it could become something huge. When all of that meshed together, it was just like, we're never gonna be stopped. I think the thing that people don't see, like which I think is a huge part to the success and I'll, I'll end with this is that Again, what a lot of people don't see is like the guys that have come into it, you guys, I want to give a big shout out, Mikey Bear Down, cuz like 100%. you guys are dogs. Like the, the stuff that we talked about, like what Jet was doing behind the scenes, how much Jet would work. The stuff that if I could tell people of what cuts he was doing with the shifts that he uh. was doing for Wolfgang Puck. And it's like, it wasn't even a question when he needed to wake up and then go to work. Incredible. He would go, he would film, and then he would work 14. He wouldn't sleep. Yeah. That a lot of people don't see. Fat Perez, any time we had to record a podcast, he was down. He had a full-time job. Anytime I needed him, Perez has never said no. He's like, I'm ready, ready to go before any of it. And then again, Bear Down, we went to Bear Down's house and we do the Real Only Dumb show with Mikey Bear Down. This guy's got a family, he's got a full-time job, and I remember going over to his house and I'm like, this guy's unbelievable. Yeah, like, when you see it, right? You're it's like, like, I you couldn't two believe, kids, like, I couldn't, I was watching his kids run around and he's got his wife and just everything that he's got going and he's there, uh, he doesn't stop. And it's every single one of you guys that you guys are just dogs. So I, to me, as much as we all have like you know our different things that help that to me is like the main thing of it is that there's just yeah. dogs behind it um so again man and and jet you mentioned it to me and i think it's so true so many people kind of wanted to know the background and how this all started there it is right there and i, I enjoyed it it's nice kind of reliving that and it, it's really really awesome and uh, it's humbling to talk about yeah it really is you i know i enjoy it man i i really do it's crazy even there's some things that like even you mentioned stuff that i kind of forget about and it's like holy shit, i forgot this happened that happened um but folks thanks for tuning in that was a fun episode i think for us all um like comment subscribe to the bob does sports podcast we're going to go have some dinner. We're definitely going to go have some more drinks. That's been another edition. Bob the Sports Podcast. We will see you next time. Clap it up, boys. That's going to be... Clap it up.